The following program on KROC is sponsored and paid for by Mesh Besher and Spence. Andrew Dabick is in the studio. Two, with two, us. two weeks in a row. How about that? Impressive, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's a streak, <laughs> right? Is it it is now. Or not? <laughs> it Dude, is Brian now. Brian Dozier. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it be nice to be Brian Dozier? Yes, after it this would. Season? Well, right now it's nice to be Andrew Davick and Mesh Besher and Spence. What are we talking about today? You know, uh, I think the pretty relevant topic that's going on, obviously, there's a lot in the news uh, about officer-involved shootings. And, you know, I hear mm. the political candidates commenting on it. I heard both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump yesterday talking about it. And, um, and you know, I guess, you know, what I was hoping to talk about is just sort of the civil aspect of what happens. The, well, you specifically called it 1983. And Rich and I both went, huh? huh? It's a year before 1984. <laughs> yeah, so there is a essentially a civil rights statute, so uh, federal statute, and it's 1983 is how it's codified. And that statute deals with these types of circumstances where you have an, an officer or an actor of the government mm-hmm. who engages in conduct, conduct that potentially violates your civil rights. And mm-hmm. that's... Short shorthand for that is a 1983. It's like what we call a 1983 action in the business. Okay, mm-hmm. well, so it's uh, you know I don't watch Law and Order, so right, well you should because it's a <laughs> heck of a good show. Okay, it is. well it used to be a good show. Yeah, I don't right. think it's on anymore. I'm sure it's not. It's still good in rerun. Netflix. <laughs> yes, you can do it in Netflix, but yeah. So these 1983 actions exist. It's sort of the civil component. Uh, where you have, uh, for example, an officer who's involved in a in a shooting, and uh, either the victim or the victim's family alleges that the officer engaged in conduct that violated the individual's civil rights. Uh, there are obviously certain circumstances where uh, these types of cases are fairly clear cut, and but more often than not, uh, there's a lot to the story. Hmm. More to the 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 second chapter. There's more mm-hmm. to the story mm-hmm. in these circumstances. Well, these days. Uh, yeah, I'm. Th- we were talking about it the other day. It seems as though this happens more now, but I think it's only because everything we do is on tape. Is it is just about everything is on video now? I'm wondering if it was this bad beforehand. You know, it's it's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the statistical information in terms of 20 years ago the amount of officer-involved shootings versus now. But I think you're right. I think with the way social media works and you had obviously the shooting in Minnesota or I should say the aftermath of the shooting in Minnesota where the woman I believe was Facebooking live. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that's how, you know, that information came to light and, and you have cell phones and nearly every person walking down the street has a cell phone. So every time that there is some sort of an engagement with law enforcement, it seems that these uh, circumstances are being taped. And, and I think what the public has to understand, and, and I'm not trying to defend law enforcement in all circumstances, but what the public has, has to understand is sometimes what you see on video isn't everything that's transpired. And uh, you've got to look deep into these cases when we've been contacted in the past. And, and bear in mind, we we do very little of this work now. Uh, but when we've been contacted in the past, um, it's there's, there's always more to the story mm-hmm. than we originally hear. We've been told that uh, these cameras don't pick up everything. And they don't pick up what the naked eye sees. You don't get the peripheral. You don't get a lot of the things in the background. Yeah, context is not part of the situation. Absolutely. You're not always picking up the sound. You're not picking up the small movements. You're not picking up the things that the officers are looking at and what they're trained to look at in terms of engaging in these types of stops. Uh, the, you know, I think one of the things that hopefully is going to come to fruition is that most of these officers are going to have body cameras. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's going to help in some respect. Sometimes you get a bit of a, a clearer view. You also get the perspective of the officer in terms of what the officer is seeing and experiencing. I and know hearing. That, and hearing, exactly. Yeah. And I know there's some concern with that in Minnesota over privacy issues mm-hmm. that, um, you know, how are you going to deal with all these body cameras and the images that are captured? Is that for public consumption or not? The city attorney was just in here yesterday, and he just made note that there are some smaller communities, such as the size of Rochester, that are getting out of the body camera business because they can't afford it. They can't afford the personnel to take care of all the data and run the requests for freedom of information stuff. And they just are saying, you know what, we're just not going to do it. And then the thing about that is if you don't have a police body camera video, for some reason it makes people think there's some guilt involved. Well, right. And, and that's a shame. I mean, if that, if that's something that ultimately can't occur because of budgetary issues, I think that's a concern. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
the, the purpose of the body cameras is not only to protect the individuals out in public, but also the officers. It, 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 it hopefully would paint a clearer picture of what has occurred. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you run into these circumstances where it's a he said, she said, I believe this mm-hmm. recent shooting, the family is claiming that the individual just had a book. Law enforcement is claiming that Here's he had a weapon. Yeah. And uh, and you have riots. Well, and then the problem is that you are either perceived as coming down in favor of this person or that person when it should just be a case by case by case by case. Absolutely. Not all lumped it's together. All, it's all fact specific. Ultimately, you have to let the facts play themselves out before you, you know, try to judge anyone's guilt. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why we have this concept of due process, to allow due process to, to run its course. If anybody needs an attorney at Mesh, Mesher and Spence, how do they get a hold of you? You can give us a call at 1-800-845-1021. Go to our website, www.meshbesher.com. Very good. Andrew, have a great week.